how do you actually get better at finishing songs? Today, we're going to talk about it. In the first half of this year alone, I've composed, recorded, mixed, and mastered 43 tracks for TV and film libraries. This does not include any of the additional mixing or producing work I've done for other artists. That's just been for me. Part of this process for me has been learning how to overcome the mental blocks and the creative blocks and all of the things that come with trying to actually finish songs. So today, I wanted to sit down and talk through just general tips that will help you finish your songs. Things that I use and employ every day, every week that help me actually get songs done instead of piling up on my hard drive with hundreds of unfinished songs and then I keep hitting new song. This video is going to be perfect for anyone who struggles to finish songs and wants to learn methods and tips that will improve your workflow and help you actually finish what you start. So my first tip is to actually set goals for your music production time. So if you sit down every day or every week at a certain time and work on music, instead of going into it blind, I actually recommend setting a goal for your music time. And that might feel like the opposite of creative because you just want to go in there and do whatever your creative mind tells you to. And that's great but you need to be realistic with your expectations for that time. So if that means, hey, today I have a 30 minute block, I'm gonna just record bass for this song, or I'm just going to program the drums, or I'm just gonna write that bridge that's been giving me a hard time. If you break it out in that way, it helps you be way more focused and actually get things done. And if you're overwhelmed with the idea of like, I need to finish this whole song or this whole album, it really makes it more bite-sized. Like today, I'm not finishing an album, I'm just, tracking that shaker. Uh, whatever it is for your song, whatever goals you decide to set, that's up to you. But that's a tip that I use all the time that really helps me to be more productive. Along those same lines, my second tip is to just make a checklist. So reminders list on your phone or a Google Doc or whatever. Just make a list of everything that this song needs before it's going to be done. So it needs drums, bass, all the other instruments. It needs editing, vocal tuning, just a huge long list, mixing, uh, mastering. Make a list of every tiny little detail that the song needs and then that's going to help you when you don't know what to do or you want to set a goal for a work session, just say, hey, I'm going to that one. An album I worked on recently was super overwhelming. It was big cinematic stuff, lots of effects like trailer style. And it was very overwhelming for me. And I'd open sessions and just be like, no, I'm not today and close it again. And it wasn't until I made that checklist where I could see all 10 songs on the album and every single thing that those songs needed that I was able to actually make progress on it and finish it. I did actually finish it. So my third tip utilizes something called Parkinson's Law. And if you're not familiar with Parkinson's Law, it basically says a task will take up the amount of time you give it. So if you give yourself 15 minutes to do the dishes, for example, it's going to take you 15 minutes, right? If you give yourself two weeks to write that school paper, it's going to take you two weeks to write that school paper. So if you take that same Parkinson's law, but apply it to your music production and say, I'm going to give myself 20 minutes to program the drums for this song, or I'm going to give myself 10 minutes to edit these audio files, whatever it is for you, that's going to help keep you extremely focused and very hyper productive, and not to mention help you meet those goals on your checklist. So all three of those things can kind of synergize together and just make you a super powerful workhorse that actually gets things done. For another example, let's say you want to give yourself four hours to mix a song from top to bottom. Once you really dig into it, that doesn't give you enough time to try to figure out what EQ sounds best on this tiny little element. It's going to force you to focus on the big moves and the important things. And that's one of the great things about Parkinson's Law is that it forces you to make decisions quickly and move on. And sometimes when you're trying to just get a song done, that's the most important thing. My next tip is to focus on the actual arrangement of your song to help push things forward. So this is gonna help if you frequently get stuck in that loop stage where you have eight to 16 bars that's like locked in, like this is the best song you've ever heard, but it's only 16 bars and it just goes through the cycle. Then this tip is gonna be helpful. You basically say, hey, every four, eight or 16 bars, something's gonna change in my song. So, you know, I've got that 16 bar section that sounds really good. Um, we're going to do the same thing in the next eight bars, but we're going to add, you know, a shaker and we're going to add this keyboard part. And slowly, if you focus on 
kind of what's changing from section to section, that's going to help kind of give you momentum. And then before you know it, you're going to have a minute and a half, two minutes done already, just because the natural progression of your arrangement has helped you push your song forward. And not only will this help you finish songs and kind of move along in the process, but it's also going to make your songs a little bit better and more interesting because something's changing every so often that keeps the listener engaged. My next tip is my shameless plug for the video, and if you're enjoying this, please subscribe so that I can deliver more helpful content to you every week as I make it. Also, I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching, so if you're looking for private lessons for logic or music production, or would like to get feedback on your song, or just ask me a bunch of music production questions, I have a link down in the description where you can check out my website and learn more about that. Also, just like the video, that helps. My next tip is kind of kind of silly, but don't hit new project. Just Just don't do it. You can't not finish your projects if you don't distract yourself with new ones. If you have tons of unfinished songs on your hard drive, then you probably need to hear this one. Don't let yourself start a new project when you still have like five that you need to finish. I understand if you had a project and you learned something from it and you're done, you're just going to abandon it. That's okay to do on occasion, but don't make a habit of it. And I genuinely try to not start a new project until I've finished the previous song. I know it feels really regimented and it's like work on this one till it's done, but that kind of boundary is what I need to be productive personally. So I thought that was worth sharing because that might help you all as well. I personally like to work in batches of 10. So I'll have up to 10 projects that are kind of working that aren't finished. And then once I wrap those 10, I can move on and start on another 10. That's how I personally approach it. But again, whatever works for you, whatever type of workflow is best, is what's best for you. This next one is a fairly general tip, but it's to prioritize big moves that give big results. So this could be a mixing tip, a production tip, a, uh, a mic placement tip. It spans across any area of music production. Just focus on important things and not like, do I need a Neve or an API EQ for this tambourine? That's not important. Important things are more like arrangement, bus or group processing, the feel of your song, like the push-pull. Those things are far more important than like API versus Neve or like, should my compression ratio be three or four to one? Or should I use a shaker or a tambourine here? Those have much less impact on your song than some of those bigger moves like you know, the, the arrangement, the actual composition of the song, the levels of your faders, things like that. So it'll be up to you to prioritize and figure out exactly like what's an important big move and what is like I'm wasting my time figuring out this EQ setting. Um, there's obviously a balance there. You need to focus on details at some level, but generally if you want to move fast, focus on your big moves that yield big results. Okay, my next tip I don't have a lot of notes for. I just have in quotes, finished is more important than perfect. That's all I got for that one. Um, that's kind of self-explanatory. Just finish it. It doesn't need to be perfect. Just finish it. There you go. I will share this part that I read in Atomic Habits where it said you need to cast votes for the type of person you want to be. So if you are a smoker, per se, like you identify as someone who smokes, then you probably smoke on a routine basis, right? Or if you say, I am a gardener, then you probably garden on a routine basis. And so same thing for music production. If you're calling yourself a music producer, you need to be producing music. Um, and I know when I heard that, that was kind of like, like, whoa, chill out. But it's true. If you want to consider yourself a music producer, I would strongly encourage you to finish your songs. And that means finish, not perfect your songs. Just finish them, just get it done. You did it. That's way more important than perfection. My next one, this was really hard for me to stomach, but it's don't be afraid to use patches or presets or any sort of preloaded sounds. If it helps you get in the creative field and it helps you move faster, do it. Just don't feel bad. I used to get all huffy about like the, um, those Waves CLA plugins like CLA Mix Down or that kind of thing because I'm like, I don't want a plugin that makes my mix bus sound better. Like I can do it myself with EQ and compression. And yeah, but it takes way longer to do that than to throw something on your master that genuinely makes it sound better. It's not cheating. It helps you get from point A to point B faster and helps me get back to creating more songs. And it's things like that that I've had to overcome. Like yeah, it's fine. Use a preset. It's going to help you make the song faster. Now, don't just 
put a bunch of presets and call it like i think it's important that you go and tweak and still add your own sound and identity to the song but it's important to note that it's okay to use patches and presets and those are all tools that are there to help you carry out your creative goal i felt like sharing that you know using patches or presets does not make you less of a composer it does not discredit you as a producer um, I felt that was important and maybe people needed to hear that. Also, nobody's going to know or care if you use presets. Like the vast majority of listeners are going to be like, oh, cool track. They're not going to be like, was that an Omnisphere patch? Like <laughs> I might notice if it's an Omnisphere patch, but 99% of the time, nobody cares in a good way that you're using presets. Uh, so don't worry about that. My final point is, you know, if you've tried all these things, and your song is still not to the point where you're happy with it, sometimes you just need to put a limiter on the master and export it. Just make sure it's loud enough and get it <laughs> printed to audio off your hard drive. You know, part of finishing songs is sometimes you're gonna finish a song and it's not a banger and that's okay. Um, but the important thing is you're consistently making more songs because if you make a hundred songs, the odds of you having a really good one are way higher than if you get one that you've you know perfected i'll go back to that you know if you just get to the point where you just i can't anymore just put a limiter on it make sure it's loud enough you know push your ceiling at minus 0.1 and just be done with it um there's nothing wrong with that either you know sometimes you just gotta get it's done you know just call it done and move on i hope you've enjoyed this video i know it was a little different i'm usually buried in my screen or playing a guitar but these are things that have been on my mind lately and I thought it'd be helpful to just make a video because I know for a fact other people struggle with finishing songs and that's something I've been focusing on really hard this year. So if you enjoyed this video, please let me know down in the comments. Also feel free to share if you have any of your own tips for finishing songs. I know there's way more to it than just what I've listed, but I know I have a good start and I'm always looking to learn from other people. Thanks again for watching. Please make sure you like and subscribe because it really helps the channel to grow and it'll help other people to find this content and learn from it. If you'd like to keep learning about music production, I'll have a video in one of these two spots. Thanks.